Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, December 5th, around 7.40 a.m. Just going to recap on kind of what's unfolded in overnight trading, pre-market this morning, and kind of what I see kind of moving forward. Now, this is the U.S. dollar index. It's the 60-minute chart, and pretty much I'm showing you last week's price action. And what we saw last week was more or less the U.S. dollar uh, reached our target and it and started pulling back. It actually started to come back in a nice controlled pullback, and then, of course, we got news out of Europe and the uh, US dollar kind of got crushed and that big drop in the US dollar really helped send equities which is this blue line uh, this is the SP 500 uh, soaring and pretty much we saw after this big move down we pretty much saw it flag sideways more or less or try and put in some type of base and then on Friday we saw it have a nice uh, surge to the upside breaking above a couple previous highs so we it broke a nice high there broke a pivot high here and uh, is yet to really break a, a key one up here but Overall, it's had a nice uh, rally, and now we're kind of getting just a nice kind of bull flag forming here. And it, right now, it is just settling into the tops of the support zone. And with any luck, we actually see the U.S. dollar actually move up and test this previous pivot high over here. So if we see this move up in the U.S. dollar, we're probably going to see equities pull back, and... Um, and that will help move the, our, the position in our favor. Now, we've seen the U.S. dollar drift lower uh, Friday night and Monday this morning, and this move lower is uh, going to have equities gap a little bit up this morning, uh, testing on Friday's highs. So I'll cover that in just a minute, but that's kind of where we stand with the U.S. dollar index. It looks as though it could still go uh, move, move higher, and... Um, that would give us a pullback on the equities market and of course it could go much higher than just this pivot high but that will be the first spot where it'll probably trade sideways or have a little bit of a pullback and uh, if it can break through there then we're actually going to probably see a, a half decent rally because we're going to have this pivot high here to break once it breaks that we've got just another little pivot high just above it so that'll trigger even more people to pile into the US dollar cover their shorts and then of course we've got the the high here so you never know if it comes up here possibly breaks through it and then has a bit of a pullback and then it could take another run and break to new highs and go higher and that would give us a sharp pullback in the equities market but that being said we are into December usually volume will start to dry out especially the after about the, the first week of December you'll see volume dry up all the big money is kind of done their shuffle they're gonna enjoy December they're not looking to crush the markets they've already done all their year end kind of shuffling so probably see some movement going into the next week here but after that volume should dry up and volume usually when it gets light we usually see the market drift higher and that's usually when you get the Santa Claus rally which you know takes place about a week before Christmas where you actually see market just kind of keep continue to drift up and up and up so that being said I don't really see the US dollar breaking out and surging to new highs I see it uh, having a bounce probably up to this resistance level the markets pull back for a day or two and uh, and then from there the markets will probably trade sideways and kind of choppy into G the beginning of January at which point uh, we'll have to see how January starts off but it could be a pretty wild uh, first quarter of uh, 2012 now taking a look at crude oil so the US dollar has pulled back a little bit in overnight trading crude oil continues to drift up into its previous high and it's starting to look more and more bearish to me on a short-term basis We've kinda of got this rising wedge here I love rising wedges usually they have a nice breakdown um, they can happen to have a little bit of a blow-off top where it'll break out of the pattern and it'll usually break sometimes a previous high you'll get some short uh, short covering and, and people pile into the long side and then you actually see it get stepped on and possibly pull back quite a bit steeper I'm not saying that's the target 84 but this is something that could happen going into January the market has a way of dragging things out and uh, if the US dollar does end up with some uh, energy going into January and takes another run and continues to move up then we will see stocks and commodities pull back fairly sharply as I explained in my uh, kind of long-term outlook that you know a possibility of what could unfold in 2012 Looking at gold and silver, here is the gold chart. It's a four-hour chart of gold. Zoom back uh, two months. Uh, gold this morning, a little bit of a dip. And uh, same with silver, just a little one. Uh, overall, they get, 
gold and silver came to their first major kind of resistance area and they kind of jumped up and they've rolled over a little bit there you can see the selling uh, volume there is still there are still sellers in here and you can see with this big volume here when the market did break down this is where we saw a lot of selling start to really pick up so as we come back up here we've got sellers still lingering in there and um, really as all these sellers sold there would be new owners there so now as those owners go through this roller coaster ride of losing all that money it finally gets its way back up here once it gets to their break even point they just want out and that's what causes resistance levels when they the people who just went through the roller coaster ride they're like I just want my money out and so they sell off as the pressure gets back up there and that's what holds the price under uh, as a resistance level now sometimes there will be big institutions or big holders of say um, for gold here for instance that want to only sell around this level so there still could be some big sellers standing in here uh, with some sell orders so every time it goes up they they unload into a, you know a surge of buying pressure so that's kind of what causes resistance or those two kind of factors now looking at silver silver's just been kind of trading uh, sideways had a little bit of a pop last week but overall it's still kind of trading uh, down below this the 34 area it's kind of ping-ponging around and uh, it had some good selling volume early late last week the downdraft moved sideways a bit it looks as though it still wants to head lower and of course if the US dollar does have a bounce today which it looks like it should have a bounce today no price see gold and silver and equities pull back taking a look at the VIX which measures volatility it's a volatility index uh, we are going in December generally this will probably want to fade down and um, I was looking at it back in this area over here looking for a spike with the market to to have a drop and see if we get the volatility index to spike up going into December though we're seeing continued weakness but last week we actually saw the VIX kind of fall fall down pretty sharply with a big gap and just showing that everybody's kind of really comfortable with what's going on and we're kind of reaching down to a level here where we we might actually see the market or the VIX jump back up to this uh, 35 36 area of course if that happens that means the stock market is uh, going to pull back probably fairly sharply for a couple trading sessions now this is the daily chart so each candle here is a day so you can see the move that I'm looking for could last um, you know three to five days which is kind of you know the target I gave it once we got in on Friday with any luck we'll see that start to unfold this week and uh, we'll get our, our position in and out uh, fairly quickly now taking a quick look at the SP 500 this is the daily chart of regular trading hours the SPY ETF and what I want to just show here is it feels it feels as though we're trading right up into this type of price action this this type of stuff here when you get these oversold conditions you get these sh big sharp bounces and then things become choppy notice how there's two or three candles uh, sometimes four candles at the tops and that's kinda where we're I think very possible that where we're trading right now is uh, we started to see more or less a reversal candle here on Friday but generally when you get a strong move up usually you'll see a move down then you'll see people buy it back up and it'll push up for a double top or just pierce the high and if you notice the price action if I was to just zoom in on this daily chart a little bit more you'll notice the price action actually you know it comes up closes comes all the way down here for you know the start of a nice sell-off then it goes all the way back up actually pierces the high and then drops off same with over here you see the price action generally come up pulls back goes back up almost test those highs and then drops and the market goes up pulls back jumps back up and then goes down so this is you'll, you'll notice if we were to jump to the intraday charts you'll see how these these uh, kind of double tops or these surges where it goes to a new high just before it drops off is how the market kind of shakes people out of the market so if we just pull these let me just uh, move this chart up out of the way. If we take a quick look at the intraday chart, it's the SPY 10-minute chart, and um, just for this doesn't these aren't the same previous tops, although I could quickly zoom back to them here. 
here is the, the first previous high that I showed you just a minute ago and you can see the market this one actually intraday wise it, it actually had a, a nice pullback searched up to a new high had some strong a strong pullback and a bear flag and then it then it dropped off it also had a broadening formation which is generally a sign of increasing volatility meaning the bulls and bears are struggling it's getting out of control that's usually a sign the market will head lower also now looking over at this one we pretty much saw a strong move up and then it had a continued kind of stretch down and then the next day it had a pop up to testing those highs might have even pierced it and then the market dropped off and this is a very similar setup to what we're actually trading right now and if we take a look at that third top I showed you this is the move up and then the market showed that you know there's big sellers down there and had a big gap down came all the way back up filled that gap tested for a double double top and then it just went into strong selling so if I just flash forward to this the last week's price action we're into resistance which is all this noise here to the left we've had a nice move up to the upside we saw some continued selling down I wouldn't be surprised which I can see in futures trading already that we're coming up for testing we've pierced these highs in pre-market so we're just a little bit higher uh, could extend out a week or, or a couple days still overall I think we're gonna see a push up to probably a new high today shake out a b bunch of shorts who uh, went short on Friday who don't understand that the market likes to move to new highs and do a double top and then hopefully we'll see the market more or less fall back down who knows if it's gonna go all the way down for a double bottom just fill this first gap or what either way um, we've got a good opportunity here to see the market you know possibly enter another quarter position with very little risk probably one to two percent downside risk uh, depending on how the price action plays out uh, this morning we can add another quarter and we'll probably adjust the stop since we're, we can add with very low risk uh, at a higher price probably adjust the stop so that it goes somewhere above this previous high uh, further back right now I've got our, our stop I think set somewhere just above this this spike but I'm thinking of raising it if we're going to add uh, an additional one because risk will be still be much lower than our average 6% maximum drawdown and it'll allow the market to run this stop if it wants to go up and then put in a double top and then sharply drop so that's kind of where we stand and kind of my thinking at this time we'll just see how the morning plays out and go from there looking at the futures just so you can see what uh, this this morning is doing in pre-market uh, this is a 24-hour clock so again these uh, large volume spikes here on the bottom this regular trading hours 9 30 to 4 and then after that obviously it's night night trading and then you get into the new day and then you get pre-market in the morning so this is Friday's trading session and we saw the market kind of sell down and then this morning and last night in overnight trading we've got the market just got had a little bit of a run up you can't see the green candle but a little bit of a gap and run and now it's stretching right up into this this previous high this was actually intraday Friday's high over here so it ha has pierced Friday's high but it hasn't broken the pre-market high yet overall it started to become a little choppy and uh, with any luck uh, we might actually take another short position at another quarter as we scale into these kind of overbought markets only when we get better pricing and then hopefully we'll eventually see the market fall down so just looking at this chart if I was to sh uh, show you similar to before we have the run up you get the first wave down you get the double double top or the pierce of the, the previous high and then you see the market sell off and that's kind of what we're looking for so the fact that the market has drifted up and gapped up uh, in pre-market on on very light volume is a good sign in my opinion and hopefully the sellers step back in and we see it head down in our favor today or tomorrow anyways that's it for now and I'll talk to you in a bit bye bye